Welcome to Drip Irrigation Basics, Part 1, System Components. Aloha, welcome, and thank you for joining us. This three-part video series will introduce the basics of a drip irrigation system, including the components, how to put them together, and some tips for maintenance. In Part 1, we will be introducing the common system parts and what each one is used for. Drip irrigation systems are one method for delivering water to crops that is highly efficient. Benefits include reduced water use, as well as reduced water cost to you as the farmer. This irrigation method provides water more precisely to the root zone and reduces weed pressure by not watering the areas between your crop rows. There are also food safety benefits from drip irrigation compared to overhead irrigation, especially when using surface water, such as from a ditch or reservoir. Your water source is the first component of your irrigation system. Some examples include municipal water, groundwater from a well, or surface water, such as from a ditch or reservoir. You may not have much control over your water source, but it has important impacts on your system due to water availability, quality, and the amount of sediment it carries. Valves control the flow of water through your farm, and the valves are really the first component that you actually have some control over. Um, you may have valves at the beginning on your main line where the water first enters your farm and also to control the flow of water to individual fields or even individual drip lines. Valves can be controlled either manually or with a timer. You want to be sure and open and close valves slowly to prevent abrupt pressure changes that can cause breakages in your system. There are two main types of valves, ball valves and gate valves. Opening ball valves can be more challenging because only a small turn creates a large opening in the valve and lets a lot of water through. Gate valves are generally more expensive but they're a good investment in the longevity of your system because it takes several cranks of the handle in order to open the valve even a small amount. This gives you more control. It's common to see gate valves on the main lines because they are a little bit more expensive and ball valves downstream on the individual fields. After your main valve into your farm, you want to install a backflow preventer, also called sometimes a check valve or an anti-siphon device. This is an important component which will prevent the flow of water from moving back into your water source. They can be as simple as a uh, small valve like this, which will allow water to flow only in the direction indicated on the component. You may consider installing a secondary backflow preventer or secondary check valve upstream of any chemical uh, injection if you're doing fertigation or sanitizer injection. Backflow preventers are required for all irrigation systems connected to municipal water systems. Be sure to check with your local water supplier for specific regulations in your area. Air vents are another useful component in the system. They help to prevent the buildup of uh, pressure in the system when it is powered off, which will allow water to drain out of your lines, and it will also prevent siphoning, so it helps in that way to supplement the backflow preventer. But it is not a replacement for the backflow preventer. You still want to be sure and have a check valve or backflow preventer on your line as well. These can be placed near the main valve or uh, additionally on any of your individual field lines. Filters are one of the most important components of a drip irrigation system. Filters are going to help to remove any particles or sediment that might be flowing through your irrigation lines, which can cause your emitters to clog and for water to not be delivered to your plants properly. There are two most common types of filters you'll see are disc or screen filters. So inside the housing you can see the filter. This is a screen filter. On the housing it will indicate the direction of the water flow according to the type of filter that you're using. Make sure and install it with the water flowing in the proper direction. Pressure regulators are another very important component of a drip irrigation system. The pressure regulator is going to make sure that the water is being delivered uniformly to all of the plants in your system. They come in many different sizes and you want to make sure that they specifications are going to match the type of drip tape or drip tubing that you are using. If your pressure in the system is too high, the 
drip tape and drip tubing can actually rupture, and sometimes the fittings can blow out as well. A common mistake is to install a pressure regulator too close to the main valve. This will reduce the pressure to your entire farm. It's better instead to install the pressure regulator at the top of each, each field to match the needs for the crops growing in that particular area of your farm. Make sure and match the pressure regulator with the needs of your crop, including both the pressure and the flow rate. A common pressure for vegetable crops is something around 10 PSI, or pounds per square inch, which is often what's recommended to use with drip tape. If you're growing orchard crops, it may be more common to see something like 40 pounds per square inch, and that would be used with a higher rating drip tubing. Keep in mind that the size of the pressure regulator has more to do with the flow rate than it does with the pressure, which is standardized by the components on the inside. If your main line is on a slope, you may need to install multiple pressure regulators down the length of the hill to avoid pressure buildup along the line as you move down slope. Pressure gauges and flow valves can be installed throughout the system to help monitor the pressure as well as the amount of water that's moving through your system. This can help with irrigation planning as well as monitoring the system for any potential leaks or other issues. You may want to install a flow meter near your main valve so you can monitor the overall water use for your farm. Pressure gauges are very helpful and one place that you may want to consider installing them is on either side of your filter, which will help you determine if the filter needs to be cleaned. Some filters have pre-threaded holes where you can simply install them on top. If your filter is clean, you shouldn't see much of a pressure drop from one side to the other. If you are seeing a pressure drop in the second pressure gauge, that would let you know it's time to clean out your filter. There are many different types of tubing and pipeline and drip tape that you will use when you're doing your installation. Some of the specifications you may want to consider when you're purchasing these materials are the material that it's made out of, the flow rate, the durability, the diameter or the size of the material, also the spacing of the emitters, which you should match to the spacing of your crop. As well, there are specifications for maximum run length, which will determine the maximum length of a row in your field that will still receive uniform water throughout the length of it. There are also some materials that include pressure compensation, which will help to deliver water more uniformly as well. Cost is also an important factor. And then make sure and double check that the, what the maximum allowed pressure for those components are and that they are compatible with each other. You'll need many different types of fittings to connect all the different components of your system. Make sure that the fittings you're using match the size and the type of tubing or tape that you're using. And as much as possible, you try to keep it simple so that you don't need too many different components. It's always good to have a few extras on hand so that if there is a re repair that's needed, you have everything you need to do so quickly. We hope these videos provide you some insight on how to get started with drip irrigation. Please see parts two and three for tips on design, installation, and system maintenance. Many thanks to our community partners, as well as to the USDA OPPE for providing funding for developing this video and related outreach materials. Versions of this video series are available in English, Ilocano, Mandarin Chinese, and Thai languages. Please check out the links in the video notes for more resources that may be of use to you. Happy growing!